and I'm going to introduce Sam Harlow, who you all know is our online learning librarian, um, and she's going to be talking to us, as I said, about free screen recording tools. So I'm going to turn it over to Sam, but again, please feel free to use that chat if you have questions or comments. Hey, um, so I'm about to share my screen. Um, so in chat, if you want just an informal thing, I didn't want to like actually have to build a poll. If you just want to talk about if you've ever used any screen recording tools, um, and if you have what you have used, and uh, that will just kind of give me an idea of like hitting people where they want to go. And if you have not used any ever, that is totally cool. Um, and I'm going to define what it is and go over that as well. Um, so as that's getting up, let me share my screen. So someone said they love Camtasia. Camtasia, great. PowerPoint insert screen recorder, Camtasia, Camtasia. Um, Captivate, Jing, yes, we're going to talk about all of this, great. Great. I'm going to show you some new stuff. Someone says Screencastify, recording in WebEx. Yes. Use the captioning. Yes. Great. <coughs> I'm not sure I'll be able to even um, teach you more. So how many of y'all like at your home have Camtasia? Because <laughs> um, that will help me um, know kind of where we're at. So someone said no, no. Okay, good. Well, I mean, not good. Sorry. But um, at least that means I'm not like covering stuff that you don't need. Okay. So here's the slides of what we're going to cover today um, and we're going to actually go out into the tools and look at them. Uh, so the, mostly I'm going to be talking about free screen recording tools because of where we're at with uh, COVID-19. I wanted to be sure that uh, we had uh, free options that many of them can be used on a Chromebook and we're even going to quickly talk about the end of using them on a mobile device or an iPad. Um, I forgot to warn my husband that I was doing this. So if you hear um, him come in with my five-year-old or my two-year-old who's napping, wake up, uh, I apologize in advance, but we're all friends here. So uh, just to make sure we're all on the same page, screen recording, sometimes called screen casting, uh, captures all of the action on a computer screen while you are narrating. Uh, they can be made with many tools that we're gonna talk about. Um, so a lot of times they're used to create tutorials or showcase a student content mastery. And if y'all haven't um, checked this out, Kathy Schrock's Guide to Everything, uh, she's actually a K-12 instructional technology person, uh, but she has a lot of great freely available tutorials on um, things like like screencasting, screen recording, um, and like uh, really connects well to like online learning pedagogy and design, um, which I'm not going to go a lot into here. Uh, but anyway, she's great if you haven't checked her stuff out. And there's a link to this, which I'll share, um, you know, the link to the presentation to this at the end. So why screen recording or screencasting? Uh, it can be used for many things, like we said, tutorials, overview videos, um, video lectures or presentations, student projects. I'm assuming again, because we're all at home, a lot of us um, quickly need to be able to show people like what they need to do on a screen. Like I know there's some people here from ARIT. Um, of course, they could use it to quickly show us how to access something on our computers without having to come to our offices or our homes. Um, it's a way that you can quickly show people how to use something online. Um, so it can be great for student workers, for patrons, for us as staff sharing things with each other and more. If y'all um, are working with students, they can be a great idea for student projects. And um, there are examples out there of librarians using them with online learning in terms of students showing mastery of a topic. So for example, um, I'm gonna talk about Canvas Studio, but I did have students um, use for an information literacy grant that um, Jenny run, the students had to show me how they searched in databases using Canvas Studio. And then they uploaded them in Canvas and I could um, have a discussion with them through them doing a video. So it can be used for cool stuff like that as well, or you know, even um, you know, chats, things like that. Um, so we're gonna talk about all of that. Um, so one thing just to keep in mind, um, I don't work for IT, but um, it is important to consider something called UNCG click wrap. Um, so click wrap is something that makes sure that we are protected with all of these uh, tools online. So technically, if you are using your UNCG email address for any tool online, 
uh, that you would use, if free ones, uh, you are signing a contract, right? Like if you ever have to click on something that says, I accept your term of use, even if it's a totally free tool, you're basically entering a contract with them. And you need to be careful about that in terms of uh, using your UNCG um, email address. So UNCG has something called ClickWrap, which means that a tool is sent to our general counsel and they review the tool and those terms of agreement that, again, I don't know about you, but I typically don't read them with a fine tooth comb and they make sure that they're okay and that there's nothing kind of interesting there. So just because um, something is not click draft doesn't mean that it's not okay to use. Uh, but one thing is that if you're using something that is not click wrapped, then you need to make sure that you're not putting in a ticket with either our ERIC um, staff and uh, librarians as well as putting in a six tech ticket. You're kind of on your own, use at your own risk. Uh, so that is how that works. You could also use a personal email address um, if you feel more comfortable. Um, and just because something is a Google product, like we're going to talk about Screencastify that some people mentioned, um, if it's a Chrome extension, which is a Google product, does not mean that it's click wrapped. Um, UNCG does subscribe and it's click wrapped to Google, Google EDU suite, but any Chrome extension technically is not. Um, saying that, if you go out to this website that I linked here, um, it has not been updated in a while. So another thing is if you don't see it here, don't panic. Another big thing is like, I have to say this really when I'm doing any kind of training that's being recorded, just to make sure you understand that I am not telling you like 100% that it is approved by UNCG. Um, as far as I know, actually, our Office of General Counsel has gone through some, you know, changes in staff lately. So um, if you are interested in getting something click drop that you don't see on here, you're welcome to email me. But again, we're at home, uh, just use it, be careful about those terms of agreement. And again, do not put in six tech or air it tickets for uh, these free online tools. Um, so and we'll, I'll, I'll talk about the difference between the two. So I saw a chat. So Franklin said, if people have questions about click wrap agreements, Eric will do our best to answer them. Great. I'm so glad Franklin is here. Um, so um, Franklin definitely knows more about that than me. But again, um, definitely let us know if you have questions. Again, I just want to make it clear that um, I'm not saying UNCG has uh, click wrapped every single one of these tools I am talking about. So here's some of the stuff we're going to talk about today. Um, not everything is on there, uh, but here are the pictures I got. Um, so a lot of y'all mentioned this stuff in the chat and we'll talk about the differences, the cost, um, all of these. And then at the end, I'm going to have a table of comparison uh, in there as well. So um, first we're going to talk about the free stuff, right? The totally free tools and their capabilities and limitations. So the first thing I'm talking about is screencast o -matic. So I didn't hear a lot of people um, say in the chat or see a lot of people say in the chat that they have used screencast o -matic. Um, If you have and you have stories to tell, uh, feel free to put those into the chat. Um, but I am going to um, be bringing up this. And this is um, Screencast-O-Matic. So Screencast-O-Matic is a free screen crafting tool online. Um, they have a lot of good stuff. And for every one of these tools, I've made like a pros and cons. So the pros of Screencast-O-Matic is that you can record up to 15 minutes of a um, presentation. So it's totally cloud-based with a plug-in download. Um, so therefore, it works on a Chromebook. It did not used to work on a Chromebook, but now it does. So it does some basic editing through the cloud and you can get a lot of the features for editing, pretty advanced features for editing for $20 a year, um, almost as much as Camtasia. So I know y'all said that you are into Camtasia, um, but Screencast-O-Matic has been click wrapped and for $20 a year, it gets you a lot of editing features that Camtasia has, um, but, um, and uh, for a lot less, and it takes away the logos. So the logo is a big thing on there. I forgot to add that to a, um, a the cons, I can do that in a second. Um, but uh, it can be, um, and it doesn't have annotation tools. So you can't like draw on a website when you're doing that. Um, but again, the logo is the thing I usually hear people complain about. Um, with the free version, the editing tools are really, you can just trim the beginning and the end. You can't really do a lot of features um, ahead of that. But it does have a built-in web camera and it does allow you to do system audio. So if you needed something to be like, 
just show the click or hear something, um, it does do that as well. It exports into MP4 or straight to YouTube or through their online um, service where you get a limited amount of storage, but enough to do like a couple of videos on there um, as well. So um, if anyone, again, has any stories they want to share about Screencast-O-Matic in the chat, uh, you are welcome to. So here's how it is. You can create a free login. Um, I logged in, and here we are. So you can um, start recording for free, which will install a plugin, but it's the kind of plugin where you won't need a um, UNCG login. Uh, you know, you won't need a... Uh, uh, the, the admin password, right? So that's another thing. I tested all of these and none of them required an admin password um, because most of them, again, work on these like browser plugin system. Um, and again, I'm sorry if that's not like the technical way to say it. Um, but I'm logged in and I can start recording from free. And because I've already, um, you know, downloaded that and, you know, the cookie, I'm fine with the cookies, et cetera, um, it will launch the recorder. Um, sorry, my five-year-old is walking in the door. Can you close the door, please? I love you. Yeah. You're going to be okay. <laughs> sorry. So you can say open screen recorder launcher uh, version 2.0, and then it will launch that, and you can see recorder launched. And you'll see, I tested this ahead of time, um, the screen, right? Like it's doing my screen. So I can, you know, go down if I don't want people to see all my apps at the top or at the bottom. I can, you know, narrow it down to whatever. Um, notice here my options where it's automatic that you don't um, have the uh, computer audio. Uh, you do need an upgrade to get computer audio through ScreenPass. I guess I forgot that here. Um, so that does not come included. Uh, it does come included with um, narration and you can do both a webcam and the screen recording as well. So you, it notes, it reminds you here that you get 15 minutes uh, of time. Uh, and then it does give you some preferences here of um, really mostly uh, recorded preferences and um, shortcuts, right? So what you can get. Um, so when you're ready, you just click record. Like many things, it gives you this countdown and now I'm recording, right? So whatever I do here, uh, it's going to show us things um, here. It's going to record my voice with the microphone, um, et cetera. So you can see here how far you are into your 15 minutes. Um, and then when you're ready to end your recording, I'll get to like 20 seconds, I guess. Um, you just push stop. And, or pause, and then when your pause is done, that could, you know, you could like answer the phone or whatever if that was going on, but you can then click uh, done. Um, so when you click done, it gives you the option of that if you don't want to do any editing, you can do a quick share, right, which is through their online um, program, right? You can also save and upload, and you can also edit your video, which you can do basic cuts, um, add text, things like that. So if I'm editing my video, it's going to say like, oh, if you pay this money, it's going to constantly give you these messages. You'll get a lot more stuff. And again, it is $20 a year, and you get um, up to uh, like a lot of different features with it. So I'm going to say no thanks, but this is what I get with the basic features. Um, so you can trim basically it and it does automatically uh, put a little circle around your mouse, which can be nice or not. And then see so you can trim the end and then it's saying only this section will be published. So then you can go to, again, save as a video file, where it will save a video file in your folder, MP4, or you could upload directly to YouTube uh, through whatever account you're logged into through uh, a screencast. Um, so those are your options. Uh, if you, either one that you do, there will be a logo. So, but it will show you, and then you can say publish. Um, so to get it, right, this video file, you then have to um, choose a folder of where you save it. So like I'll have to save it to my desktop or whatever and say, um, okay. And now it's just called recording for MP4. So here it is done. Um, and that an MP4 is a file type that could be uploaded into YouTube um, as well. So that's Screencast-O-Matic. And again, I was going to show you, there is a logo on it, but I won't actually pull it up and show you. But are there any questions about that? Sorry, Rose, can you go downstairs? 
go downstairs with the tablet. Sorry. <laughs> um, so that's, uh, let me know if you have any questions. Sorry, her tablet's so loud. Okay, so that's screencast omatic again, free for up to 15 minutes. Um, and again, one of the cons that I forgot to add on here, which I usually hear people talk about, is the logo. And again, last time I checked, Screencast-O-Matic is click -drap, which means our general counsel did go through it and say, okay, we're okay with these terms of use. Um, so here's a screenshot of how it works. I wasn't sure if I'd have time to like show you the tools, but uh, y'all saw that. So the next one I want to talk about is Screencastify. So Screencastify is a... Um, Chrome browser extension. So again, it just works through your browser, right? So it works on a Chromebook. It used to be the only screen recording tool that worked on a Chromebook before Screencast-O-Matic made it that they became a browser plugin with no download onto your computer. So um, this was one that I recommend a lot for students to make simple videos. Again, um, K-12 teachers use this a lot because, you know, some schools do Chromebooks, you know, for their students. If you have a Chromebook at home uh, that you want to use to make this, it's a pretty easy to use tool. Um, so the main con is it only lets you record up to five minutes of video. And like Screencast-O-Matic, there's not much editing options except for trimming your videos. So again, the pros are that it's really lightweight. It works on a Chromebook, on your browser, um, and it does have annotation tools. So you can draw on websites while you're recording, which I'll show you in a second. It does integrate with your Google Drive because it is a uh, Chrome extension, a Google, a Google app. Uh, and it does, uh, because it is owned by Google or made as like a Google add-on, it works really well with YouTube. Uh, but and again, you don't even have to upload it to YouTube. It gives you automatically embedding and sharing options through your Google Drive without even having to go through YouTube. Which um, again, Screencast-O-Matic, their online account does that as well. But Screencastify, again, because we're such heavy Google users here at UNCG, it can be a little bit easier. Um, like I said, the main con is the five minute limitation. So Screencastify, if you go to that website that I linked on there, is actually a um, Chrome extension. So I've already downloaded it, and this is what it looks like. Um, it's this little pink arrow tool. Um, so if you click on that, it gives you these options. Um, and it does, again, like any free tool, uh, give you these uh, you know, notes of like, if you upgrade, you're going to get a lot more stuff. Um, the notifications are um, you know, just them advertising things they can do for you. Uh, so I usually just click on those and get out of them. So notice that um, I set it up. Uh, the first time you ever set it up, it's gonna ask you what microphone to use. I just defaulted mine to my um, you know, camera. Um, it can show you your whole desktop, just a browser tab um, or webcam only. Um, it doesn't integrate desktop and webcam, um, just those two. You can, sorry, you can embed webcam within your desktop or browser view as well, but you could also just do a webcam only. Sorry, I misspoke. Um, so there it is. So when you're ready, similar to the other ones, um, you also can also look at your menu over here, which just again shows you basically your recordings you've already done. And again, they're constantly going to ask you if you want to pay money to uh, do more stuff. So actually Screencastify, just to let you know if you're interested in paying the $20 or looking into someone paying the $20 for you uh, for Screencastify versus uh, Screencast-O-Matic. Screencastify upgrades is $50 a year, uh, whereas Screencast-O-Matic is $20 a year. So it is cheaper uh, to buy into Screencast-O-Matic than Screencastify if you're going to pay the money. So um, here you are. We're going to click record. And again, uh, pretty similar. You can do just an application window that I'm just going to do my whole screen. I get a three, two, one. And then here we are. But again, what I think is cool and useful for Screencastify is that it does have annotation tools, right? So now I'm just in my regular um, thing. But notice here, I can click on this pin. It gives you color options. I'll just stick with the blue. And then you could be recording this, but doing like this kind of thing. So it's pretty nice. So it comes with an eraser as well. Um, there's also a shortcut that I just can't remember right now, but if you go to your editor, it will tell you a, a quick shortcut where you could just delete all of your annotation tools as well. You can X out of the tools, but it's gonna show you all the different tools as well. Um, focus mouse, highlight, erase, um, pen, 
again, I like the annotation feature that comes for free with the video. Um, so again, when you're done, uh, you can click on the extension again, right? And it's showing me that I've been recording for a minute um, and I click stop and then it's going to pull me into the editor um, or, or this feature, which is on there. So um, it's going to tell me how I would recommend uh, Screencastify. Um, so here is just the raw file where I could trim the beginning and the end, right? Uh, right here. Uh, but I can also open an editor, right? But then this is where you have to do a free trial where you only get it for three days. The only editing you get with Screencastify is, um, again, trimming the beginning and the end similar to Screencast-O-Matic. Um, so that's it. They're just always going to try to lure you in with this open an editor. Uh, but you can name it, right? Um, and then notice here on the right, you immediately get these um, share options. So again, you can copy a shareable link directly from your um, Google Drive. You could also share it to Google Classroom if that's something uh, you're interested in. And you could also um, share it to um, YouTube and then directly get an embed code. So this embed code is from your Google Drive. Um, but again, it could be put directly into a libguide, et cetera, um, without going through YouTube. Uh, I would caution you to be careful about um, closed captioning. They don't have a closed captioning option in the free version, which we're going to talk about um, that towards the end uh, if you use the embed code. But again, if you're just quickly trying to do something like, again, especially if you are in ERIT and you're just trying to show someone how to like get to a resource, um, and it's just you and one person where you don't really need closed captioning, this is a great quick option uh, for something under five minutes, especially again, if you're looking for something with an annotation tool. Okay. You can also download it as an MP4, which again is a nice feature of these free tools um, if you had editing software on your own computer. Um, so, or wanted to do edit it later, once we get back to work with Camtasia if you wanted. Okay, are there any questions? And again, if anyone has any feedback from using Screencastify, um, I know some people in the chat said that, or Screencast-O-Matic, if you liked one versus the other, uh, definitely feel free to put that in here. There haven't been any questions in the chat. Yeah, okay, that's good. I'm just gonna um, say that means I'm doing great. Okay, so I saw, um, I think Rachel mentioned, you can record directly within PowerPoint or Keynote. So Google Slides, uh, if you wanna do, uh, do Google Slides, you would need to use Screencastify or some other plugin, right? Um, there are sometimes other plugins, plugins, uh, Chrome extension plugins come out all the time, uh, but uh, Screencastify is gonna be your best bet for that. But if you are a heavy PowerPoint user or Keynote user, if you have a Mac, uh, there are tools built within there that you can record directly into whatever slides you have. So if you're recording a lecture um, for a class or for um, a, you know, assignment or for whatever uh, you need, that could be really good, right? Because you could use your notes field um, for scripts and notes, particularly if you have a dual screen. Um, and then Google Slides has an annotation tool built into it as well, um, as well as um, uh, closed captioning. So if you were recording over a Google Slide using uh, Screencastify, you could use the CC tool that is built into Google um, Slides, which I can show you. Actually, I can show you right here. Um, I'm in Google Slides. I'm turning on my captioning. And as you see at the bottom of my screen, now you see captioning. And you can see it actually works pretty well if you are speaking into a microphone, speaking clearly, um, but it does not save this except for in the recording. Like it doesn't create a script file. It's just a live uh, closed captioning tool, but that's how it works. You just, as you're presenting your Google slide, can turn that on and here it is. So it's a pretty nice little tool. Um, I will turn it off. Um, so, the cons of this is that it's not a great option if you're going to be um, sharing a website or going out to that. Of course, you could create screenshots, right? Uh, different than screencasting, pictures of tools online, um, pictures of your screen. 
uh, of a website or a tool um, and have like arrows and directions going into it. But if you really want to go out into a tool, the way I've been doing in this presentation, uh, it's not your best option. So sometimes it records um, a weird file type, like that's not MP4. But as far as I know, and as far as my testing, as long as you're in Office 365, uh, it will produce a MP4 version. So just make sure you're updated to Office 365. Uh, we get um, I think all of us, if you have a work computer, that should be installed. But even if not a work computer, you do get up to, I think, five accounts of Office 365. So even if you're using a personal computer right now at home, uh, you could still record Office 365, or sorry, record, download Office 365 onto your computer, uh, again, up to five times. So um, I would do it. This seems like a great time to put it on your own personal computer if you're using a personal computer at your home. Um, so there, I have links to this on each one. So uh, instructions on how to do it through PowerPoint, instructions on how to do it through Keynote. I'm on a PC, so I can't do a Keynote one. Uh, but if you are a heavy Keynote user, um, that is it. And then we already went through Screencastify on Google Slides. So if you want to use Google Slides, that's what I would use for that as well. Um, so yeah. Are there any questions about that? Rachel said that she hasn't been able to get it to work. Oh, interesting. Are you on a Mac? Yeah, I am on a Mac. And I'll yeah, check out so your... That, I remember testing that a lot when I was an instructional technology consultant. Um, it doesn't work as well with Macs. Um, if you're on a PC, it will work better. Um, and uh, so, you know, that is uh, the deal. Uh, sorry. Uh, but also, have you upgraded to Office 365? I'm not really sure. I will try and go through those instructions later on. Um, <clears throat> I'm sure I'm probably just missing a step, honestly. But yeah, I never thought I would miss my work PC <laughs> until now. Yeah, I know. Yeah, so like um, Office 365, again, could be downloaded onto your Mac, and that would make it work better. But if you're having problems, yeah, I would definitely just try one of these free ones. And we're going to talk about um, towards the end, uh, I think probably your best option, which um, just occurred to me to add this on here. Uh, earlier today. So um, sorry if I haven't told you about it earlier, Rachel, because I know you've asked me about this. But okay. So here's an example of how it works within um, PowerPoint. So um, once you're in there within PowerPoint, you make your slide, you go to the slideshow view um, at the top of there and you say record slideshow, right? So this creates a PowerPoint file, not an MP4 file. So then you'll have to go back in later and save as MP4. Um, and again, there's instructions on how to do that online and uh, me or Eric could work with you on this. Um, Franklin, great, thank you. Had to um, drop a uh, uh, link into the chat, office365.uncg.edu and log in with your UNCG credentials. And again, I'm right, Franklin, in that even if it's your personal computer, that's totally okay, right? You get up to five downloads. Um, Yes, he said yes, great. Okay, so yeah, definitely do that if you haven't. Um, and again, if, you're, if you like PowerPoint, if you have a lot of slides in PowerPoint, um, if you feel comfortable in PowerPoint, this is a great option and it is free because you all work at UNCG in terms of upgrading to Office 365. So um, you can just use your computer. So I linked to this blog that shows you how to record your screen using tools on your computer. So I tested what they recommended in terms of the PC and I could not get it to work. So I'm just gonna say, if you have a PC, don't worry about it. But if you have a Mac, uh, QuickTime is a pretty popular tool that will quickly record your screen. So it doesn't allow you to do web recording and it doesn't, um, and, but it does allow you to do computer audio, right? So that thing that uh, screencast uh, o matic wouldn't let us do, if you needed it to show a sound coming out of your computer, that would work. Um, so here are the pros and cons. Um, I think it works better on a Mac. Um, it's a little more tricky with the PC. Um, but again, maybe I didn't do enough research. I made this in a day, um, but uh, there it is. Um, so I'm not gonna talk about this much, but someone mentioned Jing. So I went and Jing, if you want it for video capture, is now called TechSmith Capture. Um, so I did download it to play around with it. But Jing, if you see this, is this little yellow thing at the top of um, my computer. Um, so are y'all seeing this? Or is um, the little yellow sun that's now coming up? Um, Yes, great. Okay, so Jing is something that I use 
for um, screenshots, right? So pictures a lot. So it's free to download. It's a click draft approved thing because TechSmith, the company that owns it, is the same company that owns Camtasia. So pretty much every TechSmith product is okay. Um, but you download it and then once it's on, see, I can just do this on my computer and take a picture of something, uh, which there are free, um, you know, tools, snippet tools on both PCs and Macs. But the reason I like Jing for this is that you can capture an image and see now I get these editing tools. So I could quickly go in and add an arrow. I can put a box around things. Um, I can draw on it or, you know, highlight something, right? Um, and more, uh, I can write on it. So, so on and so on. So it's a nice quick thing. Don't use red. I don't know why it's defaulting that. Right, and then it allows you to quickly um, either uh, save it, you can do it to screencast.com, which gives you like a limited amount of free storage, but it's pretty like hefty for that. Um, it also creates embed code. If you ever need to quickly embed an image, you can do that through screencast.com. Uh, you can save it on your computer, but you can also just quickly copy it. So I use this a lot for emails with students where I'm like, oh, here's where the databases are. I use like an arrow to point to it. Here's how to get to this in the catalog. And then I just copy it and throw it down into the email. <coughs> um, of course, like if you're going to be putting this in a presentation or whatever, you would need to be careful about alt text of the images. Um, but that's like another issue. So that's the way I mostly use Jing. But Jing does allow you to create videos. So it used to be that um, Jing only did SWF files, which are not MP4s, which could then not be uploaded into YouTube. And it's, a, it's the Flash file. So actually, because Flash is being phased out of everything, um, they got rid of the SWF file. So I used to tell anyone like, never do a, screen a screencast or a screen recording on Jing or um, like they're saying now calling it TechSmith Capture because it's useless to have this SWS file. Um, but now it can be MP4s, but their limit is two minutes. And it does not work on a Chromebook. Um, it, you do have to download something. Um, so it's not great in terms of accessibility because you can't really do much with it in two minutes. You can't um, allow much. And then Camtasia, also by TechSmith, um, they're just kind of never going to up the features in terms of screen recording on uh, Jing slash TechSmith Capture because they're like, just buy Camtasia. It's the, you know, Cadillac of editing. Um, so uh, keep that in mind. It's, uh, I basically would not recommend this, but again, um, I do recommend Jing for quick screen um, captures of just photos or like, you know, quick screenshots, um, but not for uh, the uh, video part. I just want to mention it because I know some people use it a lot. Yes, Lois said those SWF files were the bane of my existence. I mean, I don't know why, I don't know, maybe like they're owned by Flash or something. I don't, I don't know why, why they ever like thought that was a good idea. But who knows? Okay, so the maybe last thing I talk about before I quickly talk about Camtasia and uh, mobile options is Canvas Studio. Um, so how many, I know some of y'all mentioned Canvas Studio in there for closed captioning, um, but, and, and uh, I know Michael, he was in here, he's using it for some closed captioning stuff. Um, but it also has a screen recorder. Um, so let me know in the chat if you have used it before. Um, but um, it, Canvas, if you go to canvas.uncg.edu, even if you don't teach a class, even if you're not a student in the class, we all have a Canvas account, right? And especially because we're all a part of these like library organizations or whatever. Um, my screen looks crazy because I am um, pretty heavily involved with Canvas, so yours probably won't look like this. Um, but, uh, I'm sorry, let me just get rid of this. Um, here it is, Canvas. So when you log into Canvas, whether you, whatever administrative rights you had, um, we, you have this option over here on the far left for Studio. So UNCG bought into Canvas Studio fully, I think this summer is when they made it official. We were in a trial for I think about a year and now we have a full license. So it used to be that like you could only use it if it was for a class or whatever, but now we all have access to Canvas Studio on your left. So this is my course navigation right here in my dashboard. But notice right here I have this, um, it's called a global navigation in Canvas. So if you click over here into this option called Studio, this is your studio. So what Studio was really designed for was creating interactive videos within 
Canvas. Um, so you can create them directly uh, through a screen recording, which we're going to talk about in a second. But you can also upload a video you already have, and you also can link to a YouTube video. So if you click add, um, you can then see, you can paste in your YouTube URL or you can browse files if you've already made a tutorial in another class uh, for another class or for something else and you can drag and drop it into here. And then what it allows you to do is you can then put them in Canvas courses and have a discussion or create pop-up quizzes within your video. So I'm mentioning this because I think like Lois is in here. I don't know if Patrick's in here, but I know y'all do like training courses for student workers, for your employees. Um, this could be used in that and you could have pop-up quizzes in there. Um, you know, so keep that in mind. And it also has a recording feature. So if you click here, up here on the upper right, you then get an option, right? Where you can do screen capture or web capture. So if I click on screen capture, notice this looks really familiar, right? Um, Jenny and I were just testing this before y'all came in the room. It looks just like Screencast-O-Matic, so um, without the logo. So I'm guessing that what happened is Canvas Studio bought their platform for, you know, quick screen recording and just put it in a Canvas. So again, if you liked how easy Screencast-O-Matic was to use, um, this is probably a better option for you if you work at UNCG because it would get rid of that logo, right? So here it is. So you can see here, same thing as the Screencast-O-Matic. You can do narration. Um, notice here that I can record computer sounds, right? Because again, we buy into Canvas Studios, we're going to get more advanced stuff. So I'm going to click on uh, yes, sure. See, now it's going to record anything that happens on my computer, right? So like if there's a ding or like something I want to show them in terms of the background noise or whatever, it will be recorded. You can also go to preferences and see, again, the same thing that you see on that screencast-o-matic. You can then do both web webcam and uh, screen recorder. Uh, again, same kind of deal, change the size. And then again, you can just click record. And you also do get an annotation tool with this as well. So record. I'm now recording my screen in three, two, one, go. And here we are. So again, I can go over here. Um, I can pause it. I can do that stuff. Um, I can, you know, go out. Let's, you know, go to databases again. Ebook collection. Boom. So again, we've recorded about 20 minute, uh, 20 minutes, 20 seconds worth of stuff. Um, I'm not going to make you sit here and listen to this, but okay, now we're in ebooks, cool. And now you can click pause, right? And then again, notice here I can like turn draw and zoom on, or I can click done. And now I'm in the editing feature. So notice that this looks similar to the Screencast-O-Matic, but I get a lot more features. You can describe it, um, upload, you can edit, right? Start editing. So when I click edit here, notice I can add in narration, music, webcam, cursor, um, cut. I can actually like cut out sections. So if you messed up in the middle, you can do that. Um, notice if you go to tools over here, you can insert, uh, hide, overlay, replace, speed, transition. Um, so again, a lot of really good stuff. Um, again, not quite as much as um, Camtasia, but a lot more than a lot of the other free stuff because again we pay for canvas studio here at uncg speed speed up slow down again a lot of stuff going on here um so once you're done click done and you can then upload and it saves it right into your studio account for you to access later through um canvas so now when i go back into canvas sorry my zoom screen is blocking me for a second um, here's what I made right before this. So here's the recording I made um, like 10 seconds beforehand um, for this. But notice you can download the MP4 of it. But notice also, um, again, sorry, this is a repeat for some people I've trained on this recently, but you can build your captions straight here. 
and it will create a script for you um, that would then be placed within Canvas or be downloaded down that you could upload it into YouTube and not rely on YouTube's automatic closed captioning. Uh, so it's a pretty powerful tool. If you use it within Canvas to share for a class, it will give you insights like how people are watching it, when they maybe drop out of it, and it also allows your students to add comments to the video. You could also then embed a quiz within the video if that's your jam as well. So all of that's possible with a download option as well. So again, this is probably the most powerful tool if you work at UNCG that we have here um, for you to use. Of course, if you um, leave UNCG, please don't leave us. But if you do, um, some other tools are probably pretty good um, to use as well um, that I showed you. And if you have a Chromebook that you maybe can't get as many of these downloading features and things like that, um, then maybe trying something like Screencastify for quick videos works better as well. Um, so does anyone have any questions about Canvas Studio built in? Canvas Studio. Okay, so we kind of went over this, but um, pros and times. Um, so uh, the only negative I can think of is that you have to be working at UNCG uh, to have this. Um, and then also, uh, you so you would have to, that's the main one. And then uh, you have to log into Canvas, but I mean, that's not hard. Just go to canvas.uncg.edu. And here's a um, screenshot of the recorder. Okay, so a lot of y'all mentioned Camtasia. Again, I didn't want to like harp on this because um, I know a lot, the issue and probably why a lot of y'all are here is that you have Camtasia at work, you're a heavy Camtasia user, but you're at home and you don't have your work computer. Um, so you can't, um, you know, use Camtasia. But in case you haven't used Camtasia or you want to understand the difference, um, Camtasia is really the main tool out there for screen recording with advanced features, right? Like editing features. So um, this is actually just like a general screen, uh, uh, image I got from Unsplash of like a video editing software. I don't, I think, I don't think it's a uh, Camtasia, but this is the same idea, right? Like you can overlay, um, you know, images with videos. You can have fade ins, fade outs, things like, like really advanced stuff, speed up, slow down. I do want you to note that what I showed you in Canvas Studio does a lot of that stuff. So it's nice. Um, and does pr produce you that file. Um, but because Camtasia is a like, you know, pretty powerful tool. It takes up a lot of space and it's expensive. Um, so we do have a limited amount of licenses through ARIT. If you're playing around with uh, Screencastify, uh, Screencast-O-Matic, or even Canvas Studio, and you're like, I love this. Um, and when we come back to work eventually and you want Camtasia, I recommend that you talk to Franklin and uh, ARIT about that and see what can be done. Um, but again, it's more advanced and uh, it's also a longer learning curve. Right. And people who have experience with it can talk about it. Um, you just have to, um, you know, play with it for a while. There's tons of free tutorials online, uh, but it's usually harder to use, right, in terms of these free tools. Um, it does allow you to do a lot of the advanced stuff, though, if that's what you need. So, um, yeah, so that screenshot looks like Adobe Premiere Pro. Yeah, like I said, it's just like a unsplash image of the video. Um, so other tools you can use with screen recorders. Um, so you need a computer or a Chromebook, again, with some of these. Uh, a webcam can be nice, depending on what you're doing in terms of like having your face in there, or it can be distracting. So think about which ones you want. Um, it can be done with phones and um, mobile devices, which we'll talk about in a second. You have to have a computer with a microphone, right, if you want it to record your voice. But you could make, of course, a quick tutorial software without your voice. Um, if you're just showing someone how to quickly use something, you will probably need to note in YouTube or whatever in the comments that there is no sound. So people don't think that it's not working or that the closed, you know, captioning hasn't been added. And technically, even if you don't have any words, um, you'll still need to make a um, almost like a script of what's happening on your screen. Uh, we did that for a video once where I worked with UNCG online and with their accessibility coordinator. So if you um, need any advice on that, let me know and I can get you connected to her. Um, but even if it has no, none of your voice, you still need to make like a Google Doc saying, this is a video of um, someone, you know, accessing the library website with music playing in the background and like a step-by-step -step, um, instructions of how you did it. 
Um, so there are movie editors, uh, video editors that are free online and sometimes come with your computer. So if you're a Mac user, um, they used to have iMovie come for free. I don't know if they took that away. PCs used to have Movie Maker come in. Um, and then again, sometimes you can get access to Premiere, um, things like that, depending on where you are. We do have a subscription to Premiere through Adobe uh, where you could download it on a computer, but it takes up a lot of space. And again, the learning curve is high. Um, so I did not want to cover that today in this session. Um, so streaming services, of course, work well with it. So Screencast-O-Matic uh, has that built-in one right through their website. Uh, so does Jing through screencast.com. Um, but of course, you can um, integrate or um, upload an MP4 to YouTube or Vimeo. Both YouTube and Vimeo have closed captioning tools built in. Um, Amera is what's used through Vimeo, and then YouTube has their own. Uh, they're not perfect, they're glitchy, but they're better than nothing. And then of course, you could use, if you make a video on something not Canvas Studio, you can still upload it into Canvas Studio and use them to create the captioning. So you can record on a mobile device, iPad or mobile phone, but you need an app. That's the only thing. So I did not have time in the last three days to like test this out on my iPhone or iPad, um, but Here's some apps that were recommended based on some brief research I did. Um, record it comes up first in a lot of Google searches. Um, anything like this, I would recommend reading the reviews, um, testing it out for a little bit before you commit to it. These should all be free. Uh, I would not pay money for something on your phone, especially because ideally with your phone or your iPad, you're just making a quick tutorial on how to do something um, with that. And here's something that I have not had time to um, upgrade this to also include Canvas Studio. Um, I will. Um, but here's some common questions I get about all of these tools, right? And so I made a table. So um, the first one is how much time you get. Uh, the second one is cost. The third one is does it, how does it record your, the, the audio? Um, what does it output to? Logo. Uh, does it uh, have interaction options and editing options? Can you, uh, do you have to download something or does it work through a browser? And I have to, um, again, it used to be that you had to download on screencast Omatic, but you don't have to anymore. So I'll fix that. And then, um, you know, can you FaceTime, can you integrate your web camera with it? So I'll upgrade this to include Canvas Studio before I send this to Jenny. Um, but uh, can't because again, I like thought of doing Canvas Studio um, this morning. So um, keep that in mind. But again, these are common questions I get about these things uh, in terms of their limitations and what they can do and why I would pick one over the other. And that's it. Questions, concerns, comments, stories. People can feel free to put their questions in the chat or if you would like to uh, unmute yourself and ask your question out loud, that's also all good. Um, I see people saying thanks, so I'm going to take the opportunity to throw the uh, link to our assessment form in there. It's that forms.gle that I just added in there. So if you can take a moment to fill that out, that would be super. I'm not seeing any questions right now, so I'm going to go ahead and stop the recording.